YOLO guys. Hope you are doing good. So today we will understand what is Bitcoin. And like always, before understanding what Bitcoin is, we will need to understand why Bitcoin. And for this, we will first need to understand what is money. I remember somewhere in my economics book, I came across these lines. Money is a matter of functions for a medium, a measure, a standard, a store. And these lines beautifully explain money. So money can be any item or verifiable record which fulfills important functions. First, store of value. Second, medium of exchange. And third, standard or measure of value. At its very core, money represents value. To understand, let's take an example. If you're working somewhere, at the end of the month, you will get paid in terms of money. You are getting this money in exchange of the value that you provide in terms of your skills or time. Now, you can use this money to get something of value from someone else in the future. It can be a new t-shirt, your Wi-Fi subscription or anything else. If we look into the past, value has taken many forms. People has used a variety of materials to represent money. Salt, wheat, shells and of course, gold has been used by people as a medium of exchange. For something to represent value, people have to trust that the item is indeed valuable and will remain valuable long enough for them to redeem this value in future. We always trusted something to represent money. But however, over time, our trust model has changed from trusting something to trusting someone. To explain, people found it too difficult to carry stocks of wheat or bars of gold, and even coins for that matter. I will anytime prefer to receive this 10 rupee note in case of this 10 rupee coin. And this is the reason why paper money was invented. Now, if you have ever taken a careful look at these paper money, these are actually promissory notes guaranteed by the central bank. And in our case, we are trusting RBI for its value. Initially, paper money was backed by gold. However, as time passed and due to macroeconomic changes, the bond between paper money and the gold that it represents was broken. Now, why this happened is a different story. But basically, government told the people that government itself will be liable to the people for the value of this paper money. So, people continued to trade using this paper money. That is backed by nothing but only government's promise. This works because we trust our government and this is how fiat money was created. Fiat in Latin means by decree or order, meaning Indian rupees, dollars or any other currency for that matter has value because the government has ordered it to. It is also known as legal tender coins or bank notes that must be accepted if offered as payment. So the value to this fiat money comes from the legal status that government or the central authority has given to it. And this is how a trust model has changed from trusting something to trusting someone. And in this case, the government. Fiat money has two major drawbacks. First, it is centralized. The central authority, that is the government or central banks, controls it and issues it. And second, it is not scarce or limited in quantity. It means that the government or central bank can print as much as they want when needed and inflate the money supply in the market. This causes inflation and reduces the purchase power of money. This is why we need more money to buy something that used to cost less. Today, we use UPI, debit card, credit card and other forms of digital money. Here, we are not exchanging any real cash, but only some numbers are being changed in our digital account. So now, when the money is digital, anyone can make copies of it and duplicate these files. This is called the double spend problem. To prevent this, bank uses a centralized ledger system to keep a track on who owns what. Everyone has an account and this ledger keeps a tally on each account. We all trust these banks and banks trust their computers. So, the solution is centralized on this ledger in this computer. Whenever we are giving anyone the control over the money supply, we are giving them enormous power. And this causes three major issues. First issue is corruption. Power corrupts and absolute power corrupts absolutely. When banks have the mandate to create value or money, they basically control the flow of value in the world. And this gives them almost unlimited power. The second issue of this centralized system is mismanagement. If central authority's interest isn't aligned with the people it controls, it leads to mismanagement of money. 
for example printing lot of money to prevent certain banks or institution for collapsing as happened in 2008 the problem of printing too much money is that it causes inflation and basically erodes the value of citizens money when extreme example of this is venezuela the government has printed so much money that the value of the currency has dropped to such an extent that the people are no longer counting money but in fact they are weighing it instead and the last issue is control we are basically giving total control to the bank or central government and government can any time decide to freeze our account or deny access to our funds and even if we are using only hard cash the government can cancel the legal status of it and this was actually done when demonetization happened and we have all gone through it this was the state of the things until 2009 but everything changed in october 2008 when a person or group of person called satoshi nakamoto published a document also called as white paper and suggested a way of creating a system for a decentralized currency called bitcoin this system created digital money that solved the double spend problem for the first time without the need of any central authority at its core bitcoin is a transparent ledger without any central authority today most of the money is already digital banks basically manage their own ledger of balances and transactions however banks ledger is not transparent and it is stored into their main computer only banks have complete control over it and we cannot have a look into it on the other hand bitcoin's ledger is transparent at any point of time we can look into it and see all the balances and transactions that are taking place the only thing that we could not figure out is who owns these balances and who is behind these transactions so bitcoin is pseudo anonymous everything is open trackable and transparent but we can't still tell who is sending what to whom to understand let's take an example so we are seeing certain transactions from the bitcoin's ledger here as we can see certain bitcoin address has sent 10000 bitcoins to another bitcoin address on 22nd may 2010 this specific transaction was the first ever purchase made using bitcoin and it was made to buy two pizzas by a guy named lazlo by the way this day is also celebrated as bitcoin pizza day bitcoin is also decentralized and uses blockchain technology we have already seen in our previous video how blockchain works If you haven't seen that video yet you can watch that video from the link given in the description below like most money today bitcoin is also digital there are no actual coins and only rows of balances and transactions when you own a bitcoin it means that you own a right to access a specific bitcoin addresses record in the ledger and send funds from it to different addresses but why bitcoin is such a big thing This is because it is the first time since the digital money came into existence we have an alternative to the current system. Bitcoin is a form of money that no government or banks can control. It's like the time before the internet where information was limited to a privileged few. But thanks to the internet the information now is decentralized and accessible to all. Bitcoin is the internet of money and it's offering a decentralized solution to money. Bitcoin has several advantages over the current system. First, it gives us complete control over our money. With bitcoins, only we have access to our funds and no government or banks can freeze our account. Bitcoin is scarce. The supply of bitcoin is fixed at 21 million and due to this, bitcoin is actually anti-inflationary. Finally, bitcoin opens up the digital commerce to more than 2.5 billion people around the world who are unbanked or underbanked today just with your mobile phone anyone can start trading using bitcoin many merchants both online and offline have already started accepting bitcoin also there is a lot of innovation happening in this regard so now you know what are the benefits of bitcoin and what bitcoin is in the future videos we will learn more about cryptocurrencies and how to buy bitcoins and other cryptocurrencies also if you have watched the video till here type bitcoin in the comment section thanks for watching and insanians keep exploring take care meet you soon